Okay, so that brings us to 2.7 in the manual, which is uh, installing the belt. We're starting to get into some of the mechanical on this, and uh, this utilizes timing belts. Uh, let me go ahead and explain the difference. When you pull your belts out of bag G, uh, you're gonna notice there's two in one bag and an individual. Uh, that's just for the distance. So the two go over here, and the individual is right here on your X axis. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one out, and let's have a look at the belt itself. Now, unlike uh, a fan belt on your car, which is smooth, these are timed, meaning it has little gear teeth, which means if these have the proper tension or going around a uh, pulley with teeth in it as well, every time it turns, it's gonna rotate this belt. There is no chance of it slipping out as long as uh, uh, the tension is correct on that. And that's very key when you have a positioning system such as this at CNC. We can't have any slippage because if it were to move really fast, stop and go the other way and the belt were to slip, it would lose resolution or lose its position knowing where it's actually at. And you'd have a print over here and then it would start coming off as it, loosed, uh, or as, as it lost resolution. So these are timing belts. So uh, tension on them isn't as critical as say a V-belt because it's not using friction to rotate through, it's actually using these teeth to grab and rotate through. So these do not need to be crazy tight. But there is a tightening process that we are going to be going through. Now we also utilize this teeth to actually tension and grab and lock into the system. We're going to go through this. Now all three belts are actually identical in the way that they're uh, installed and tensioned out. Um, a little bit different here because we have a dual drive and then that timing needs to be adjusted properly together. But as far as the center section where it attaches and how we adjust that tension is the same. It utilizes the exact same components and blocks on both sides. So I'm going to go into real intricate detail on the center one because we got really good visibility here. And then just realize the, uh, the process is almost identically the same here. So I'm just going to uh, smooth over in the center sections and just explain the outer sections when we get to that one. All right, so let's go ahead and start on to the center. I'm going to move it forward so we can get a real nice shot on that. And of course, I'm going to be leaning over it, so, so I'm going to look awkward, but that's all right. All right, so first thing we have right over in here, I'm going to slide that forward. We have the, uh, the retaining block. Over here is our adjustment block. Now you remember I said that we have this uh, adjuster and as I rotate it, it has a, a permanent locked um, nut right in here. So as I thread this, actually this rotates and moves uh, uh, in and out. So you can see that moves towards the center and towards the outside. First thing you need to do is go ahead and adjust this all the way out and furthest apart so it's spread all the way open. And you'll understand why that's important here in a second. Uh, what we're going to do is remove these little screws right here. We're going to run the belt. It comes up and around this motor. And you can see on the motor it has a timed uh, sprocket, has teeth on it. It's going to come around this motor, come through this groove right in here, which is a channel that stops this belt from flexing or, or, or chattering uh, or flapping as it moves really fast. Uh, and it's going to come around this idler side and back over to this tensioner. It sounds uh, complicated and there's a really good picture of it in the manual itself, but it's really simple. Once, once you see me do it, go ahead and watch this process instead of uh, doing it as, as, as I'm doing it. Watch it, you can pause it and come back to it. But once you see what it is, you're gonna understand it really easily. So first thing I'm gonna do is just remove these retaining block screws. And I'm gonna lift up on the retaining block. Now when I lift up on this retaining block, take a look at it right here. I'm going to move it in the light so you guys can see it, but it has teeth on it. Now if we take a look at this belt, remember we already showed you it's got a smooth side and a tooth side. Basically we're going to go tooth to tooth and that stops this belt from being able to move from that. You're going to line up the edge with this with the edge of the very last tooth where I'm just going to go ahead and lay that in there like, like so. And I'm just going to slide it right back on down. So you can see now that's attached. Those, tooth, or those teeth are, are interlocked with that uh, block and it's gonna pull on it. So I'm just, all I need to do is put these screws right on back in and really simple. There we go. Now that belt is locked in. So I'm gonna just go ahead and run it down and around this motor. And this is where some of those needle nose pliers may come in handy. If you got uh, fumble fingers, this might be a little more difficult, but uh, if you got small dainty hands, you'll be able to get this through. Ah, there we go, I got it through. So what's that say about me? All right, so we're gonna bring this on through, just run the belt on through uh, that side so you guys can see. It comes through around the outside the back and along the back side. 
Now, there's a groove right here on the back. I'm gonna turn this sideways so you can get a good shot of this. There's a groove that this sits in between right here and it basically goes against this back. As this slides back and forth like this, it rides right into that groove and it stops the belt from uh, uh, basically getting slack or, or adjustments in it. So I'm just gonna slide that over. Now, here I'm gonna turn this so you get a really good shot of it and here is our idler pulley. So I'm just gonna put that through and wrap it right around like we did on the other side and grab the belt and pull it on through. There we go. So we're set. So we're locked in here around the uh, drive motor, around the idler, and right on back uh, to this position. Now we've already taken this adjustment and slid it all the way back via this nut. So all I'm gonna do is go ahead and remove these two screws which releases the, the teeth on this plastic lock. There we go. I'm gonna lift this on up and same situation. There's a, a little metal block right under here and the reason it's, it's metal is because it's, it's timed with this uh, tensioner. Now we are gonna move it in the light. You can see that there's teeth in this one as well. In this situation, what I need you to do is go ahead and just hold the belt. You're gonna slide this to approximately the center. It doesn't have to be exact. And you're gonna pull tension on it. So if you're pulling it, you're gonna see that this is moving. So it has just a little bit of tension on it. Now you're gonna take this and line the teeth up somewhere in that belt to where you're able to take the block that's right here and set it back down onto this adjuster right here. So basically you wanna be able to see, it's not quite there, so I'll move one tooth over. There we go, I can get it down onto that adjuster. So I'm just gonna slip that on in. And slide that down and now it's installed. But you can see we've got tension or lack of tension on this belt. It's, it's got a lot of play into it. Don't worry, that's what this adjustment is for. So let's go ahead and get these screws installed. Oops. There we go. So now this belt is installed. Go ahead and move it back and forth a little bit and that's just gonna make sure that the belt is engaged in the teeth on our drive motor. And we're gonna go ahead and start tensioning it. So we're gonna take this and start threading the screw inwards, this direction, and it'll drive this, this way. As this moves this way, it's gonna pull the belt, the tension out of this belt and give us, uh, uh, or pull the slack out of the belt and give us a little bit of nice tension. You're gonna be able to probably start twisting this by hand. So go ahead and just start turning that inwards until it gets a little difficult to do it by your finger itself. And at that point, you can see it's already tighter, much, much tighter. Now, to adjust the proper tension on this belt, it, it's, it's difficult to try and explain how much tension should be on the belt. Um, in industrial situations, there's actually a, a, a tool that uh, goes on the belt and it squeezes it like this and it can actually measure that type of deal. And on these smaller timing belts, you basically just do it by feel. Like I mentioned, it's hard to explain. The easiest way to do this is by the twist method, meaning that you're gonna slide it over and you got some slack into the belt. And you take the belt and you turn it to where it rotates to about 90 degrees. When you rotate the belt, uh, every time it's twisted around and around, it shortens its length. It basically gets tighter and tighter. So it's a good indicator of how tight the belt is by how far you can rotate the belt around before it kinda gets a lot of drag or a lot of friction on it. What we're looking for is about a 90 degree before you feel a, a drag on the belt. So at this point, this one's a little bit on the loose side still. So I'm gonna slide this on over, giving me access to this, uh, this adjustment screw. Now using the flat blade screwdriver, I'm just gonna go in here and I'm gonna give it a half a turn. Slide it over and try it again. Yeah, right there, right there at that halfway point, I can feel it starting to get tight and at, at one full, 90 degree, uh, I'm sorry, 180 degree, meaning the top is towards the bottom, it's almost impossible to twist it. Um, uh, so we want that 90 degree. So this might even be a little bit on the uh, tight side, but as this thing starts to move and wear in, it's gonna stretch the belt slightly, so that's almost perfect for this, uh, the, for this operation right here. So I'm gonna call that good. We got 90 degree twist on that, and that is adjusted out. We slide it back and forth. 
nice smooth motion. Now what we need to do is, uh, before we move on, is get some of this wiring out of our way now before we do these belts. That's our next operation. So let's go ahead and clean up this wiring. We're gonna talk about these wires and we're gonna run the loom up and around and down, up through the front, and then we're gonna be able to install these belts for our Y axis.